If you're considering moving to Utah from the East Coast or from the Midwest, today's video is for you because today I'm talking about what you should expect and some of the differences you'll see between Utah and the Midwest and the East Coast, so stay tuned. So you might be relocating to Utah from either the Midwest or the East Coast. If you're considering that, I wanna talk about some of the things that you should expect moving to Utah. I've helped a lot of people relocate from the Midwest and the East Coast to Utah. So these are some of the things that they have talked about with some of the differences and struggles perhaps that they had finding houses in Utah and why it was such a problem for them. But I'm also familiar with it, I actually just got back from a trip from the Midwest and so I thought this was a perfect time to talk about those differences. So first, and this is in no particular order, but the weather is going to be very very different in Utah than in the Midwest and the East Coast. So we have lower humidity here. We are considered a high desert so you're not going to have the lush green landscape that you find in the Midwest and the East Coast when you move to Utah. And one of the things that translates to is you're going to have to get used to the fact that our yards are not like what you're going to find in those East Coast and Midwest areas. Because we are such an arid climate, you know, one of my clients mentioned they had a hard time finding a home here because they were expecting yards like they got on the East Coast with trees and grass and kind of some area between houses to spread out and have a little bit of privacy. Along the Wasatch Front, you're really not gonna have that. This particular client had to go to Park City and purchase in Park City to find kind of that type of atmosphere that they were looking for or Immigration Canyon. So there's two things right there, the climate with the high desert and low humidity, and then the yards and not having that lush green trees and grass and everything that you see in those areas. With that drier climate, another thing that one of my East Coast clients told me is they got a lot of nosebleeds in Utah because it is so dry and it is higher elevation than what they were used to on the East Coast in Georgia. Their family had lots of nosebleeds. So when you move to Utah, you need to drink more water than you would normally do. A lot of people People have humidifiers in their homes to try to keep things moist so that they don't have nosebleeds and things like that as well. Utah is known for amazing outdoors. However, when you get to the Midwest and the East Coast, you have a lot of options for lakes. You have the Great Lakes, you have Lake of Ozarks, you have Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Florida, all have over 11,000 lakes in them. And so here in Utah, we don't have an abundance of lakes that people go to like you see in the Midwest and the East Coast. If you're looking at boating and jet skiing and things like that, you know, in those places back east, you can typically go pretty close and find those types of activities. You have a lot of lake houses, things like that. Well, in Utah, along the Wasatch Front, they're far and few between. Some people will go to Utah Lake, but most people will travel further, like Jordanelle outside of Park City and places like that. So you're talking a good 30 to 45 plus minutes to do those types of activities on lakes that are pretty easy to come by in the Midwest and the East Coast. If you're considering making a move to Utah, reach out to me. I help people relocate to Utah all the time, so I'm very familiar with the differences depending on where you're coming from in the United States. Calling or texting me is the best way to reach me, but feel free to email as well. So Again, back to weather. We talked about this is high desert in Utah and we don't have the humidity and the lush green that you see back east, but it also means we don't get as much snow as you do on the east coast. Like you hear every year that just the east coast getting hammered by snow. You can sometimes hear about the huge lake effect snow around the Great Lakes and things like that. And in Utah, we just don't get that much snowfall. Now we did have a record year this past 
last year, but that's unusual. So you, you know, you have to be prepared that the winters are not going to be like what you may be used to living in those snowy states. If you're in the Midwest or even sometimes in the South, you're prone to tornadoes as well. And Utah, we are not prone to tornadoes. We had one back in 1999 that hit downtown Salt Lake City, but we are not known to have tornadoes like you will back east. And finally, this was a big one. Moving from California to Utah, I didn't have a lot of experience with basements, except for in the summers going to the Midwest and experiencing those basements. But in Utah, we don't have those mildewy, dark, dungeon-like basements with the little teeny tiny windows at the top that you could not have as an emergency egress. I mean, you can find them in older homes like downtown Salt Lake City, the avenues, uh, Sugar House, those types of areas. You may still find those types of basements, but generally speaking, the basements in Utah are usually at least eight to 10 foot ceilings in them. You have big windows like you would see on the main floor because of emergency egress with bedrooms and stuff like that down there. So just overall the basements are totally different in Utah than what you find in other places. Now people still do the same things with bedrooms down there. Sometimes you'll find laundry rooms and you know here's some videos that I took from the Parade of Homes to kind of give you an idea of what our basements can be like here in Utah. I hope you found the video helpful and gave you some things to consider if you're moving to Utah from back east or the Midwest. If you are looking at making a real estate move, I'd love to connect with you. You can shoot me a text, send me an email, do what you got to do, but get in touch with me. But as always, make it a great day.